In this video, we're going to talk about finding test intervals for a polynomial. Now, in order to determine the intervals on which the values of a polynomial are entirely negative or entirely positive, we're going to use the following steps. We're going to find all the real zeros of the polynomial and arrange the zeros in increasing order. And these zeros are our key numbers of the polynomial. Then, we're going to use the key numbers to determine the test intervals. We'll choose one representative x value in each test interval and evaluate the polynomial at that value. If the value of the polynomial is negative, then the polynomial will have a negative value for every x value in the interval. And if the polynomial is positive, then the polynomial will have positive values for every x value in the interval. So let's do an example to help us really kind of understand what these process was saying to us. So we're going to determine the intervals on which x squared minus 3 is entirely negative and those on which it is entirely positive. So in order to determine that, we're going to factor our quadratic. So we'll have x squared minus 3 and that can be factored as an x plus the square root of 3 and an x minus the square root of 3. And so here we can see that our key numbers are going to occur at a value of x equals a negative radical 3 and at x equals a positive radical 3. And we got that, again, by finding our zeros which means we really needed to do the zero product property right here. So we set those equal to zero so that we could solve, and that's how we got those key values. So that's going to give us our test intervals. Our test intervals are going to go from negative infinity to negative radical 3, then from negative radical 3 to positive radical 3, and finally, from radical 3 to infinity. So now we want to, in each of these test intervals, we want to choose a representative x value of the polynomial and evaluate that. And so we're going to use a table to help us out. So here we have a table and we're going to go ahead and put our interval into our spaces. So we'll put those in. and then we're going to pick an x value. So a number between negative infinity and negative radical 3 would be the number negative 3. A number between negative radical 3 and positive radical 3 would be 0. And a value between radical 3 and infinity would be 3 or even 5. So we're going to go ahead and now we're going to find the value of the polynomial. So we're going to plug in our value. So we're going to have Oops, that should be a 3 right there, and see what we get. So we're going to do that for each one. So we'll start by taking our value, negative 3. And when we plug negative 3 into that, we'll get a value of 6. And here we see that 6 is positive, and so that tells us that the sign of the polygon there is positive. When we plug in a 0, that gives us an answer of negative 3. So here we see that our sign would be negative. And when we plug in a 5, we get a value of 22, which is positive. So the polynomial has negative values for every x that is in the interval negative 3, sorry, negative radical 3 to radical 3. And it's positive for every x in the intervals of negative infinity to negative radical 3 and from radical 3 to infinity. And so we're able to say then that the interval from negative infinity, sorry, from negative radical 3 to radical 3 is negative, and the intervals from negative infinity to negative radical 3 and from radical 3 to infinity are positive. And if we check our graph, this can be confirmed to us visually as well. So this is our graph, and this is our first key point, negative radical 3. And this is our second key point, 
radical 3. And as far as our intervals go, we see that from negative radical 3, sorry, from negative infinity to negative radical 3 is going to be this space right here. And from negative 3, negative radical 3 to radical 3 is going to be this space here. And from radical 3 to infinity is going to be this interval over there. So again, we have our negative infinity over here and our positive infinity over there. And so we see that those intervals are still the same and correspond with what we've gotten. Since we see that here we have negative numbers, and we see that here we have positive numbers.